Today's shout out is for Zoldinga. Duskana the Rage Mother versus Mina and Den, Damia and Sophia. I've got Ramp and all of our colours. Rhythm of the Wild for some haste. We should be able to get pretty much everything going within the first few turns here, which is good. Alright, a Field of the Dead coming down for a tap land is fine. Turn 1 Sol Ring for Sophia. Brought to us by Terax, who is a patron to the channel. A bounce land from Mina and Den. Alright, and another land for us, so an untapped forest. We'll make the Rootbound Crag come into play untapped, and we'll grab ourselves a Triome here. Toothy, imaginative rascal, you have to assume, is going to go and grab Peer from the deck. Five cards in hand at the moment. Kodama's Reach means that two blue players have tapped out now, so that'll be a good chance to get down Rhythm of the Wild. Be good to curve out with this into our commander, but... I think taking advantage of the blue players being tapped out would be a clever idea. And a Sylvan Advocate from Mina and Den. Need six or more lands in order for it to gain plus two, plus two. Alright, and a Reliquary Tower. Just keep drawing into lands, so let's go Rhythm of the Wild. And now we see a Detective of the Month. Uh, he did go for Peer, Imaginative Rascal into hand previously. And Toothy now being a 2-2 after the draw step. Swings in at Damia. A three visits being cast for more ramp from Damia. Just a tap land from our opponent with six cards in hand and blue mana now being held up, so glad I got the enchantment down. Alright, that is a get lost, so we can't go for irregular cohort and get lost, but we do need double white to go for the shapeshifter, so we'll get a couple of two twos into play. And priority is being held up by Damia, which is noteworthy. Um are we that desperate to get two damage in over here? Because the token won't come in with haste. Let's just go with a plus counter. Not worthy that with our commander it cares about the base power and toughness. Which is unusual, so we can buff our two twos up to our heart's content and Duskana will still see them upon entry and with the attack trigger as well. And hopefully we'll be able to swing in with this with our commander and then hard cast the last march of the Ents at some point and draw at least six cards would be good. Master Biomancer is a real pet card of mine, I really like this card. And the Detective turning in at Damia does not have the City's Blessing yet, that is 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, a couple more cards away from that. Unusually, Damia being cast with 6 cards in hand, tapping out into that. And we see another commander in the form of Mina and Den. And some noteworthy lands here, we've got Thespian Stage and a Maze of Ith, which will not tap for mana just yet. If our opponent does point Maze of Ith at any of our stuff, it will still get the buff from Duskana, so that's worth noting. Okay, and that's one that I was hoping to draw into. Unexplained Absence is a really nice new piece of removal from the recent set. For each player, exile up to one target non-land permanent that player controls. For each permanent exiled this way, cloak the top card of the library. And that is an instant for four mana, so it's kind of like a, an instant speed decimate, sort of. So that's a really nice one. I uh, will uh, yeah, drop the Reliquary Tower before someone wheels. And then I think it just has to be the Commander. We're not going to be able to hold up Get Lost, unfortunately. But we'll draw a couple of cards here. I think Duskana can come down with a plus counter. I'm not going to risk it against the Damia. Alright, and that's Shamanic Revelation. That's alright. So we'll maybe cast that next turn and hold up the Get Lost. Yeah, let's take a couple of creatures in down the middle. These will get a plus three, plus three buff, so we can trade them out for their commander, but I dare say they're going to take the hit. So that's a 6-6 six, six and a 5-5. Five, five. And a nice healthy hit for 11 damage straight onto Damia, who will only draw one card off the commander next turn. Unless he can somehow empty his hand during the upkeep. Toothy continuing to slowly draw over there. This is upon leaving the battlefield, so if we exile it, it'll still trigger and draw more cards. And now 4-4 four, four swings into us. A 4-4 four, four against the Duskana. They either have a buff for the Toothy to trade on the Duskana, or they want to draw the cards from this, so we'll make him wait for a bit longer. And now Sophia into play. Comes in with a couple of plus counters, thanks to the Master Biomancer, as does the Tiny. Haven't even seen this thing get buffed yet. And Damia going to draw a card at the beginning of the upkeep. Alright, so Damia just sitting there with, what is that, 5, 6, 7, 8 mana. And we see a Collector Oaf, so no artifacts can be activated. The only one in play at the moment is the Sol Ring. Alright, a Clever Concealment. 
So are we just aiming to go for last march of the Ents next turn because that can't be counted. Uh, maybe we need to make sure that our board is intact then with a clever concealment. Or we could just try and draw with Shamanic Revelation and see if we can get some interaction out of our opponent's hand. Um, let's play the Flooded Strand, that could be a tap land. Triggers Field of the Dead for the first time. And then we'll need the buffs on our creatures in order to make the Shamanic Revelation more relevant, because we'll be able to gain some life. So we'll see if we can get a Cyclonic Rift or whatever out of our opponent's hand. Get the plus three, plus three buffs on each of them. Priority is being held up there. And we can phase out in response if we want to. Okay, an Assassin's Trophy onto our commander. Um, we could just recast the commander here and hold on to Shamanic Revelation. We won't be able to play the Clever Concealment then though. I don't think. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. And then a couple of tacks. Get an untapped land here. Yeah, we'll be one shy of it. Oh, actually, we'll get a zombie token, won't we? So yeah, I think... We allow Duskana to go down here. We'll draw cards when we have that re-enter. So yes, use the Assassin's Trophy. We'll grab a white source just in case we need that. For the Clever Concealment, I haven't worked it out too cleverly yet. Commander can go back into the Command Zone. Field of the Dead triggers on the Assassin's Trophy land. And we still get the buffs on these creatures, so we'll see if Darmia wants to do anything about that. Darmia deciding to hold back. So I'm assuming that this is some kind of control build our opponent's gone for, which I don't particularly want to be playing against, so we will get rid of Darmia as soon as possible. Got him down to 14 already. And let's replay our commander. And our commander cannot be countered thanks to the Rhythm of the Wild, unless they want to blow that up. Might see an attempt at a counter here. Can still target Duskana with the counter, but it won't do anything. Yeah, a Draining Welk. When it enters the battlefield, counter a spell. Put X counters on this, where X is the spell's mana value. So I think they still get the uh, counters here. But we're going to have Duskana enter. Yeah, so they do still get the plus counters. That is a 6-6 six, six flyer. Uh, we'll have Duskana enter with a plus counter. And now we draw cards. Let's. We've got unlimited hand size, so we'll go for an untapped land with the flooded strand in response. Because then we get a zombie token and we'll draw even more cards here. Uh, make that a savannah. Needed a white land in order to um, pay for the white on the clever concealment. So I think that was a constructive turn there. Alright, and we do get a source to plowshares we've got access to now. Um, yeah, some decent stuff there, so we will pass. Was well, definitely worth taking off a turn to get this down in the end. And we've got a ganjo as well, so if he does decide to start swinging in with... The um, Darmia over here, we will be able to flame strike it out of the way. Another plus counter on Toothy. Sophia has been depleted to only four mana now, thanks to the Sol Ring being switched off. So uh, Tiny is going to swing in at us. That does have Trample, so might as well just take it, I think. Not seeing any food tokens. Can't activate the food tokens anyway. Can activate the Sophia, though. Two, three swings in at us as well, and does have the City's Blessings, so... Why don't we just take the hit and try and gain some life with Shamanic Revelation at some point? Or is this a detective? Oh, it's a dog detective. Okay, so that can't be blocked either. Wasn't going to block anyway. So we'll go down to 29. A food token being created because a dog has dealt combat damage. And there's a clue token as well off that same trigger. Kami of Whispered Hopes is going to enter with plus counters on it thanks to the mutant. So that will tap for a decent chunk of mana. And we are allowing Darmia to untap four cards in hand and is going to draw some more. Try and go wide next turn. Wavebreak Hippocamp obviously wants to be playing uh, instant speed in this Darmia list. Thespian Stage going to be made a copy of our Field of the Dead. And could start triggering that this turn if he's able to make a couple of lands. We'll assume that he has a couple of lands in hand thanks to the uh, fact that it's a lands matter deck. We'll assume that he has a couple of lands in hand, thanks to the fact that it's a lands matter deck. Playing a Cindervines, whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, it deals one damage to the player, and you can destroy an artifact or enchantment. Two damage to the permanent's controller, if you sacrifice it. Gonna see plenty of non-creature spells being cast this game, so... Yeah, Darmia certainly doesn't want to see that. Looks like he's tapping out for whatever it is, so that's good. A Voracious Great Shark is not a non-creature spell. Whenever it enters, counter an artifact or creature. Uh, yeah, an artifact or creature, that is an enchantment, so 
Not sure what the aim is here. Alright, so we'll see what the Gruel player does. I'm thinking that we might use swords on Darmia or Draining Welk or something. I don't think we're going to lose our Discarna, but we might be able to go wide enough to get rid of this player next turn. So if they block with Darmia and we swing in with five creatures, that'll be these two getting blocked, you assume, and a zombie token, so we only deal... Yeah, we only deal 5, 10 damage to them. Uh, we could go for this with haste, I suppose. So, yeah, let's risk a source to plowshares. This means that we can't hold up clever concealment, but I think it's worth the risk to get rid of a death toucher. May well be that we can get more interaction out of our opponent's hand. Cindervine steals the first ping to us. So that successfully goes down. May well have some single mana interaction. That did gain him some life as well. So we'll... Maybe need to swing in with our commander regardless. Not getting into that many creatures annoyingly, otherwise we could just go last march of the Ents. Uh, <laughs> a Karmic Guard is just from our graveyard. I'm just wondering if we go last march of the Ents, are we going to get any relevant creatures into play with haste? Play the planes. That will trigger the Field of the Dead again. Get another zombie, but it will have summoning sickness. Yeah, we can at least get this thing down. There's no point hard casting this when we can get it down with the last march of the Ents. I'll just double check this. Put any number of creatures from hand to the battlefield, so... Yeah, we'll draw cards at the very least. If we're unlucky and don't get into creatures, then... We've got more card draw to play over the next few turns. It will clear cards off the top at least. So we're not holding up any interaction necessarily. Another one damage dealt to us. Hopefully gain a chunk of life from Shamanic Revelation at some point. An opponent could get rid of Duskana in response to this, so we don't draw as many. The Gruel player is holding up priority. Oh, and I've actually miscalculated there, so we've held up a Field of the Dead. That's the last land I should have held up. Alright, Rhythm of the Wild going to make it so that stuff comes in without haste. I really wish he hadn't done that, because... Eh, that means... I mean, we, we haven't shown that we're swinging in at him at all this game. Oh well, I can understand the worry here. We do still draw the cards, at least. Alright, what have we got? Oh, double strike makes a difference. Although, anything that gets double striked will just get chump blocked. We could put it on the Duskana though, so that it doesn't die to attacks. Um, yeah, we'll get everything apart from the Karmic Guide into play here. So let's play out the Archivist of Ogma, the uh, Silverblade Paladin, and the Shadow Creature. And not coming in with haste, annoyingly. Soulbomb, we have to be careful what we say yes to. So, Archivist of Ogma, we do not want to soul bond with. Don't want to soul bond with the Shadow Creature either. But with this one, we should be able to target what we soul bond with upon the Silver Blade's entry. So, we'll target our commander and pair it with that. So, now both of those have double strike. And we've got no mana held up, so go through to the attack phase. Got a decent number of blockers at least here. Apart from the shadow, we need to remember we can't block with that. So we'll assume that these three get blocked. And then it's 5, 10 and 15. So we can't quite get rid of this player, but we still need to swing in as much damage there as possible. And hopefully, and hopefully the Bant player will finish him off. So one trigger per 2-2 two, two goes on the stack with Duskana. Plus 3, plus 3 as ever. And is there going to be some interference here? You're not protecting the Darmia player, surely. Uh, okay, it's just a plus counter on each dog you control, so yeah, getting ready for the buffs on the next turn might be swinging in at us. We're putting a lot of stock into getting rid of one player here, and it does mean that we're not necessarily doing too well in defending against the player to our left. Getting trample on all of our stuff next turn will be a good thing. So everything getting through that we thought would. Duskana doesn't have trample, unfortunately. Managed to take down the wave break Hippocamp. And down to three he goes, taking down all the creatures in the end. Uh, yeah, we will pass at that with an unlimited hand size. And still only four mana available over here, thanks to the uh, Collector Oaf in this direction. Didn't get any tokens from the Field of the Dead yet. Our Champion of Lamhole is a scary one. Comes in with four plus counters on it. So that means that we can't block with anything. And then Pierre Imaginative Rascal might have been a good idea to get that down before the Champion of Lamhole. That comes in with three plus counters on it as well. So able to put another couple of counters on with the champion. I wonder what would have been the right sequence in there. If they'd gone for peer first and then this, it would have been six counters. And this way it ends up with six counters anyway, so I don't think it matters. 
So anything with power less than 7 can't block here. I'm just hoping that he gets rid of the Darmia player. I imagine a lot of this is coming in at us. Aversin's Pilgrim is some more buffs. May well be able to take us out, actually. That is now a 10-10. So we've got a 7-7 seven, seven, Toothy. A 2-3. Two, a 2-4. The Commander is a 5-6. Tiny is a 9-9. Nine, nine. <laughs> so that's 16 damage off the two big things alone. And doesn't seem to be concentrating anything over at Darmia. Yeah, all of it's coming in at us. I mean, if this is an Alpha Strike, then... It's probably the right move. Didn't have a path to exile or anything anyway, otherwise I would have been livid holding up that Field of the Dead. I dare say this is us done. Oh, got us down to zero exactly. Alright, so... Allowing Darmia another turn though. Could have a board wipe in hand. So me trying to get rid of Darmia was the wrong move apparently, although it turns out we couldn't have blocked with anything anyway. I mean, we held up... Where is it? We held up some decent blockers. But, um... Champion of Lamhole, a really good one. Managed to get nine counters on it the turn it came in, so we were never going to play around that. Does Darmia have a board wipe? Just a Seagate Restoration, fishing for a Toxic Deluge, maybe? Nine cards in hand after the Seagate. Mina and Dem playing Awaken the Woods, where X is four, so four Forest Dryad lands. Uh, yeah, it seems as though it's Scooby-Doo's to win here. Bunch of Field of the Dead triggers there because these are lands, but nothing here is going to be able to block thanks to this being so massive, assuming that it stays in play. What's the three mana fog that makes a bunch of spiders? Arachnogenesis, is it called? Wouldn't have thought Darmia would play that, but you never know. Morska Undersea Sleuth. Didn't think much of this, Commander. Do people care about this one? People interested in seeing it? Don't think much of it, personally. That enters as a 6-7. And this buffed up to a 13-13. So now taking in Pier at Darmia and then dedicating everything else to the right. So assuming that Pier isn't going to be dealt with, I think. And throwing in a Snapcaster Mage in the hope that he'd be able to chump block. But of course, Pier is just going to swing straight through. All it took was some removal onto the Champion of Lamholt, but none of us had it, unfortunately. Maze of Ith being pointed at the Champion. And one final card in hand we are going to see here, apparently. Heroic Intervention? Nope, just sacrificing to put a plus counter on each dog you control. Getting rid of the food token. And then doing it again with the Investigate token. Alright, but not managing to survive even after removing the 1313. It is minus 2 and minus 1. And the last card in hand was Adrix and Nev, so Tarax winning this one. In hindsight, should have gone for the Shamanic Revelation, but obviously wasn't playing around a Champion of Lamheart, so... Can't feel too bad about losing that one in the end. If you want to see more from Duskana, then be sure to let me know in the comments of this video, and I will see you all in the next one, I hope. I'm Travel Kai. Thank you for watching.